Hi everyone. Given the time of year it is, we thought we'd do a very different kind of video today, something a little bit more fun, a little bit different. And what I'm going to do is kind of riff on an Irish coffee cocktail today. Um, you, you'll see there's nothing Irish on my table and I don't really think I can call it an Irish coffee for those reasons, but it is a floaty coffee. And that's what we always call them in my house at Christmas time when I prepare them for family. So I'm personalizing these coffee cocktails to my tastes. I'm obviously beholden to what's in my drinks cupboard when I'm experimenting with making any kinds of cocktails. So as a rule of thumb, I wouldn't necessarily go out and buy exactly these uh, spirits when you're preparing these drinks at home. Use what you've got, what you know you like. Don't waste your really, really good stuff, which you can enjoy neat. You just want something that's good quality and obviously use really nice quality coffee as well. What I do think is quite nice is to pursue a particular kind of flavor profile. So I'm gonna do two really distinctly different takes on a Irish coffee or a floaty coffee. One of them I'm gonna use Danche, which is a washed Ethiopian coffee. It's a filter roast, it's very delicate, it's very aromatic. So I'm gonna use ingredients that will kind of echo that in the drink. So more neutral spirits, things that are zesty, citrusy, and a little bit spicy maybe, but more on the floral aromatic side. For the other drink, I'm gonna use our festive espresso, which is from Arcadio Plot in Honduras, produced by Marisabella Moises. And it's a bit richer, it's a bit rounder, and therefore I'm gonna use some sort of slightly harder spirits. I'm gonna use less refined sugars and go for a more of a cooked fruit kind of flavor in terms of the fruit I'm using, and uh, some spices and chocolate, of course, to make it a bit more desserty. So one of these is probably nice to have with breakfast, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, and one's definitely an after dinner treat. What I would suggest doing when you're making coffee cocktails is to use a much stronger ratio than you would if you're just gonna be drinking the coffee black. So 60 grams per liter is what I normally use when drinking black coffee. But for these, I'm gonna use 70 grams per liter in the case of the uh, coffee um, cocktail made using Danche and 80 grams per liter for the cocktail made using Arcadio Espresso. I wouldn't worry too much about jotting down exact grams or mils right now. What I'll do is put the full recipes in the description below, and that will give you an opportunity to actually batch up the syrups beforehand, as well as the alcohol, and you can keep that in the bottle so that it's fairly quick to make these drinks. All you need to do is prepare the coffee and prepare the cream, and then all of the other ingredients are kind of already made to hand in the right ratio. If you're making just a simple sugar syrup, it'll keep for five days in your fridge in a little bottle, but because we're gonna add alcohol to it as well, you could probably keep it for longer. But it is a nice idea to sort of batch them up ahead of time once you've got the recipe working to your tastes though. So I'd recommend preparing one initially just to get to know the recipe and make sure it's the right balance and strength for you. And then when you've got the right recipe, you can then batch it up. I'm gonna use two different coffee brewers as well today, just because you can brew the coffee any way you want to make this cocktail. Espresso might be a bit intense, but any filter method or mocha pot or French press or anything like that will be perfect. Okay, let's prepare the first cocktail. I've got uh, boiling water, so I'm gonna just rinse my V60 filter paper. And as I mentioned before, I'm gonna use a higher ratio than I would normally if I was just drinking black coffee here. So I've got 21 grams of coffee, and I'm gonna add 300 grams of water. Now, because Danche is a very floral, and fruity coffee, it's got kind of pineapple and peach notes to it and tons of like floral aromatics. I really wanna sort of echo that with the ingredients I'm using in the cocktail. To sweeten it, I've just got refined sugar, but also a little bit of honey, which I think has a bit of florality as well and a sort of more complex sweetness. And then for the alcohol, I'm gonna use some rum and some cachaca. I also let down the syrup with a little bit of clementine juice and I saved a little bit of the peel because I'd like to sort of rub it around the glass and spritz it to get a bit more of the peel aromas in the cup as well. And then for a garnish right at the end, I've combined a bit of ground Szechuan pepper, which I find really floral and citric and just an amazing aroma, as well as some sumac, again, echoing that kind of bright citric quality. Really strange thing to put on top of a creamy coffee cocktail, but in this instance, it just sort of sets your expectations a little differently. You're gonna go into it thinking, this isn't gonna be any old normal Irish coffee. Coffee is made, it's all finished draining through. So this is the syrup I've already made. Like I say, you can batch this up ahead of time and you can even add the alcohol to it ahead of time as well. Bit of rum. And some cachaca. Now this one's very apricot smelling to me. So again, it kind of melds, melds well with the uh, flavors in Danche. Only a little bit of this. Wow, okay, that's gonna work really nicely with the Danche. So I have my coffee, 
I have my sweetener and my alcohol, and then I just need my glasses. I don't have Irish coffee glasses, which are thick, so make sure whatever you choose can withstand hot, <laughs> hot drinks, otherwise it's gonna be a bit of a disappointment. I love the smell of clementines at Christmas. So I'm gonna add the coffee to the glasses as well as the alcohol, but add this first just to take the heat off. So we're almost there. The last thing obviously is the cream. I'm not gonna shake cream sitting down. I think it will go disastrously wrong. So I'm just gonna quickly hop and grab what I need. For this one, I'm actually gonna add just one drop of rose water to the cream, as well as a little bit of sugar. I don't wanna go overboard with the rose and the florality, but just that little bit, it's just gonna hint more at the floral characteristics of the uh, cocktail. I'm back with cream. So, once you've aerated it ever so slightly with a shake over, over ice, because I like it ice cold, when I'm then gonna plunge through that into the hot coffee, just grab a spoon, just on the surface of the of the drink and pour. Yummy. Now, I've put a little bit of rose water in the cream and I'm gonna sort of echo that again with these really floral spices, the sumac and the uh, Sichuan pepper. So very unusual, I know, but I really dig it. Just a little bit. I'm very excited to, to have one of these now. It's, it's a little before noon, but cheers. That is so yummy. Oh, excuse me. Wow, okay, because there's a little bit of clementine juice, you're again like accentuating the acidity in the coffee, which is like cooked citrus in this case. The sweetness is good, but it's not like a crazy sweet, um, like it's not too much, it's just the right amount here, wow. And because of the, the spices and the rose water and everything, you get this really big like floral bomb to it. It's so unusual compared to what you might expect with a normal Irish coffee. I'm gonna call this one Drunken Flowers, because it is, clearly there's a bit of booze in it with the rum and the cachaca, but that's so floral and yummy. Oh, okay, I might have to finish one of these at least. There's no one else here with me today, so uh, I might have to have two. Mm. Really, really good. But if you just had a really heavy meal and you want something desserty and rich and chocolatey, we're gonna make another one with Arcadio Espresso which is a little more classic in flavor profile, and I'm gonna call it one blackout curtains. Okay, I've uh, reset everything, and we're gonna go through our second Irish coffee cocktail, or floaty coffee, and I may have a little more flush in my cheeks because the first cocktail was really delicious. Um, I'm gonna use a clever dripper for this one, and again, updose the recipe, um, this time a little bit more, because I'm using an espresso roast, our um, Arcadio espresso roast, the coffee itself is a little bit darker, a little bit more developed. It will dissolve a bit easier, so you can updose it anyway if you were gonna brew one of these kind of coffees for filter coffee. But I'm actually gonna use 80 grams per liter for this one. So I've got um, 24 grams of ground coffee and I'll add 300 grams of water. This is a little bit more classic. This is more chocolate, nutty. Um, we, we have notes of like brown butter and cacao nibs in this uh, espresso. They'll come through in the filter, of course, as well. So for this cocktail, I've got a syrup made with um, different sugars this time because I feel like this more substantial core coffee flavor can stand up to more rich additives. So I've got a mixture of maple syrup and palm sugar. So it's like jaggery or um, uh, panela, I think is, is sugar cane, but that kind of unrefined, savory, fudgy sugar. It's much more complex and a bit more intriguing, a bit deeper than just using plain white sugar. It smells amazing. And I also put in a little bit of syrup from a jar of maraschino cherries, because I'm gonna use a little bit of maraschino in this one as well. I don't want acidic fruit or bright, I just want that kind of cooked fruit, that richness, and you know, cooked cherry at Christmas time seems like a really nice fit. So to my palm sugar maple syrup cherry juice, I'm gonna add some Aardvag, which is not my style of whiskey. I don't personally like peaty, smoky whiskeys, but 
it actually suits this drink really nicely because it adds an edge and a bite to the drink. So you can get away with using something really substantial here. Oh, even the smell when you pop the cork. And then this is more my speed, a bit of maraschino. Again, syrup first, just to take the sting of the heat out of the coffee to not damage your glasses. Yeah, I think this pairs really nicely. So I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla to the cream for this one and slightly sweeten it up a touch as well just to cope with the extra richness and sort of bittersweet characteristics in the coffee here. So excuse me for a moment while I get the cream. That should be lovely now. Thick, sweet and vanilla-y. And again, grab your spoon and just set it on the surface. So to finish this one, what I want to add is a little bit of nutmeg, very classic at Christmas, just a few rasps. And find your favorite chocolate, add a little bit of grated chocolate as well to just really hit home on that dessert vibe. The smell is amazing. I'm gonna drink this one. I was a little generous with the cream here. Okay, Merry Christmas. Oh, it's like drinking a truffle or something, just really rich. The smokiness is really toned down here, that sort of peaty quality. It integrates into the drink really nicely, and I think this helps do that, sort of softens it a little bit. And just those kind of sugars really fill it out, and it's got this kind of woodsy, resinous, sappy quality, probably because of the maple syrup, but also the characteristics of Arcadio itself. Amazing. Nutmeg on top always reminds me of little custard tarts where they're finished with a bit of nutmeg. And I, th I think that's just such a nice Christmassy flavor to add to this drink. I really, really dig this one as well. Much more of a dessert after dinner kind of one compared to the one we brewed with Danche. Um, but as delicious, just a completely different take on an Irish coffee. Thank you very much for watching this little uh, guide for preparing a couple of floaty coffees, different approaches to an Irish coffee that you can enjoy at Christmas time, of course, but whenever you want in the year, to be honest. I think using coffee in cocktails is really interesting and there's loads of ways you can experiment. So if you've got any particular favorite recipes, do let us know about them. We'd be really interested to hear how you get on. And if you try any of these, I hope they work for you and you really enjoy them and they can sort of lighten up your, your holiday a little bit. Um, that's all from us for today, so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon.